Um, and there's that whole wonderful problem solving teamwork aspect, which doesn't go well with multiple choice tests. So it hasn't been getting a whole lot of attention until maybe recently. So this was a, um, from the NICE Cybersecurity Workforce Framework, a little graphic of what they see as the job skills that are really needed. And they divided them up into these categories that you see inside of the rectangles in the middle. And so it kind of helps, just like we have the practices in computer science, we have these job skills in cybersecurity that are a little more targeted into the kind of things people would be expected to do. And then they tried to correlate that with the job openings. So don't know how accurate that is this year, but um, this is what we had to start with last year. And I haven't gotten any new numbers. So the pathway to get there, if we can cover all of the Maryland CS standards that are in grades K to eight as part of a pre-service program so that every new teacher has at least that base level awareness of what computing technology cyber are about. And then if the people doing the specialty courses get specialty training for the high school level, that doesn't forget that whole bigger picture of the practices, those core practices in computation, fostering the inclusive computing culture, collaborating together, because some of these higher level courses are sit the kid in front of a computer and have them click for 45 minutes. And there's no communication, there's no collaboration, there's very little of these things that engage a broader group of kids who don't already know that this is something that they could be interested in until they get hooked on it. So where can we go to learn? Well, let's start out by building the base. Gotta love common sense media. They have everything you ever needed to know about the basic awareness of safety online. There's lots of clever things that are interactive online to get people engaged with and students of education could review these and look to see where they cross over with the standards and meet the goals like the Be Internet Awesome, which is quick and entertaining. For the early elementary, there's the Ruby books with all of their unplugged activities that teach you what goes on inside a computer and a little bit about how things connect on the internet. And code.org has a couple different sets of videos that are um, really nice intros and we have notes for them up on the CS for MD site about what computing systems are and how the internet works to cover all the bases. And CSTA this July in Alexandria, or is it Arlington or Alexandria? Up near DC, um, Linda Lucas will be there as one of the presenters who wrote these books for the Hello Ruby. So that should be a lot of fun if you have any chance to get to the Computer Science Teachers Conference. We do have new resources popping up all over the place. At the introductory level, this teachingsecurity.org now has three lessons that are um, very foundational and very, very interactive with things that the kids do and talk about that are really good. There's some other um, older kid resources over there on the right. As the districts are trying to put together what they want to teach for cybersecurity, these seem to be the most interesting resources that people want to use. Derek Babb, who's with University of Nebraska at Omaha, created a curriculum and taught it himself for about five years and refined it about an intro to cybersecurity for high school. And you can see the topics there on the left. Khan Academy has some great free resources about cybersecurity, cryptography, and the internet, which can be part of any course and you can track people's progress to see whether they actually do it or not. Has some built-in self-tests and quizzes in there too. Um, UMGC ran a Gen Cyber Camp last summer 
and they made all of their lessons plans, labs, and presentations that were developed by a group of teachers from Maryland and Virginia available. And the link is there to take a look at what the teachers have created. And they're going to have a follow-up meeting next month, I think it is now, to get these teachers back together and see what happened when they took these ideas and brought them back to their classrooms. Because the teachers who came could have been art teachers, math teachers, computer teachers, all different levels. And so each one was trying to figure out where cybersecurity fit into what they were doing. And um, I know at least some people are using the free Linux course. And up in Carroll County, a group called Magic is developing some curriculum for um, a Capture the Flag. Capture the Flag teacher prep course. Something to prepare teachers who don't know anything about it to be able to support students in participating in a little capture the flag type of event. And UMGC has um, this NetLab Plus, which Frederick County is reaching out to talk to them about possibly using with some courses next year. And other districts are also very interested. So there's great resources. If you do all that, you'll know everything. But of course, there's more. Um, Code HS makes most of their courses available for free. They do have a course on cybersecurity. Um, SANS has the Cyber Start with these basic units in here. And supposedly, there's teachers piloting that this year. And there's the example of one of the Khan Academy type of um, setups. Doesn't this make you want to go out and just try all of these? I want to do them all. We have a resource document at our link there, the bit.ly MCCE Cyber. And it's a collection of some of the recommended things that um, we came up with. The whole um, document is probably four times this long to take a look through. But sometimes too much is too much. So the part about the hands-on with equipment, actually touching things, is a tricky part. So some for the elementary or middle school age to get kids physically touching computing devices and getting them to communicate with each other and have conversations about where some of those problems are can work really well, especially with things like microbits, which can communicate with each other and the kids can program them in a block language. Um, the circuit playgrounds, I don't know if they can communicate with each other, but they can get that hands-on hardware experience. And certainly, um, NICIRC's curriculum and others use the Raspberry Pi computers, which are, you know, wonderfully affordable $40 computers that you can set up your own little mini network and teach kids some actual hands-on connecting kind of activities. Some of the things right now, Girls Go Cyber Start's going on. Maryland had like three of the five top spots last year. We've got some teachers who are very into this and it's a very friendly introductory um, experience in cyber type of puzzles. There's the Pico Capture the Flag and they have some of the old answers there for people to go back and look at. And a lot of our schools, of course, tried the Cyber Patriot, but it, um, without a mentor, most teachers curl up and give up without something to help them through there. So we talked about the other things that are under development. So there's lots of stuff out there. We need to figure out how to teach people what it means and how to use it. Obviously, professional development's a big part of it. How do our university partners fit into delivering possibly some of that professional development for the teachers. We're planning on some big sessions this summer and there's a lot of interest in this area. So I would love uh, ideas and um, find out what areas different people are interested in, especially when it comes to cyber. And that's what I got. <laughs>